How hard is it to beat Borderlands 2 with only legendaries? The rules of this challenge are, I can only use legendary guns, shields, and grenades. Anything goes for class mods. And I will be using the Vault Hunter's Relic for better legendary chances. This is going to be a fresh, normal mode run, and I can only use melee until I get a legendary gun. I went Maya because I haven't played as her in actual years, and she doesn't have a turret or a flying robot, so I think she's pretty balanced. And her skills do end up carrying me through multiple points in this run. As a bonus, I disabled Bar for a little bit more challenge. I'm also going to add these cool counters that show how many times I've reloaded the map to farm a certain enemy, and to show how many total legendaries I've gotten in this run. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I unequip all my guns, and Claptrap gets his eye ripped out. My first taste of combat wasn't bad. I thought melee would be much worse than it was. Knuckle Dragger ran away most of the fight, meaning I had a great opportunity to punch him in the face. I won the boxing match, but he didn't drop a legendary. You know what this means. Farming time. After 9 reloads, I got my first legendary, and now I can start to play the game. As you can probably guess, being overleveled and having a legendary gun makes Liarsburg pretty easy. And then I go ahead and meet Hammerlock. Apologies, but when Claptrap speaks, I feel my brain cells committing suicide one by one. A pleasure to meet you, Vault Hunter. I am Sir Hammerlock. While doing side quests, I came to the horrible realization that I can't use shields until I get a legendary one. This is going to be very interesting, and very annoying. I also decided to go kill Midge Mong. I learned that you can phase lock him. Unfortunately, however, he didn't drop a legendary. I'm not gonna farm him, I just wanted the experience from this place. I have a corrosive legendary against Armored Boom Boom. How do you think this went? It was a little scary considering I didn't have a shield, but Maya's phase lock is amazing. They didn't drop a bonus package, which means I can't use grenades. I did accidentally a few times, but I won't count that. I did decide to try and farm them a few times, but I was extremely unlucky. And after four more runs, I got nothing and decided to give up and move on. Captain Flint himself wasn't too difficult to deal with. Of course, there's his fire phase where he's invulnerable, but it's mostly all the minions he spawned that were getting me. Of course, though, they are just free second wins. I've never really had trouble with Captain Flint, but at the same time, I don't think I've ever gotten a legendary from him, and this time's no exception. One thing this playthrough has taught me, however, is not having a shield does not fit my playstyle of running in and hoping for the best. This was my first death, and it was a little embarrassing. But to be fair, the enemies are just huge cowards who run away after you get knocked down anyways. I tried a few times to be cool and make this grenade jump, but let's just say I uh, took the car instead. I talked to Corporal Reese, got this clutch second wind on a bad nomad, actually killed the 20 blood shots, and got into Sanctuary, where I met the best character in the game. I forgot to turn in the mission to open the safe, but then I learned I have to go to Frostburn Canyon next. 
I help Dr. Zed perform surgery, mostly so that I can get his next mission to get Doc Mercy, so I can hopefully get a legendary from him. Next, we meet Ritsuko. I mean, Tanis. Awesome voice actress either way. Also, I require a new ventilator. This lab smells of bacon. Bacon is for sycophants and products of incest. My next goal is to farm for an unkempt herald. I pause the footage whenever I farm so that I don't waste storage space, but I actually got it first try. It's not the best, but it's still a legendary and an unkempt herald, so I'll definitely take it. So I decided to try and farm for another unkempt herald, but let's just say I was very unlucky and added a total of 20 attempts to my list. But don't worry, it only gets worse from here. 20 attempts and no legendary, that's nothing. Normally, Frostburn Canyon never gives me trouble, and it didn't give me too much here, but there is something I should probably note. I have no shield. Frostburn Canyon has mostly fire enemies. Yeah, it goes about how you'd expect. I just have to play range. The other thing I want to note is that Maya's deflection skill is absolutely broken in absence of a shield. So I am so glad I took this perk instead of going any other skill tree. I also got what is commonly referred to as a loot homie. He didn't drop anything good, but still, that's a pretty rare find. So I was excited to see one either way. This is the second time I've done this skip in my life. I've only done it once successfully. Why do I even try to be cool? Besides Lilith being annoying, as usual, and stealing all of my kills, this section was really easy. The Unkempt Herald is a very well-balanced weapon, as we all know, and it seems to carry me through most of the game. I don't play much Maya, so I don't know what enemies you can and can't phase lock, but let me tell you, the ones you can, it's pretty broken. Like, the bad psychos just aren't allowed to play the game. I would kill to get a Tesla like this in a normal run. Why do I get such a good grenade in a freaking legendary only run? Also, just because I want to play the game, class mods will be allowed. Like I said, anything goes for class mods. However, don't worry, I will redeem myself later on. On to the next farm, Bull. Now honestly, I had no clue what this guy dropped at the beginning, I just knew you could farm him, and he could drop a legendary, or at least had a higher chance. After just one additional attempt, I got a fastball, so that's what he drops. It's a really good grenade to get, especially early game like this, so I was excited. Honestly, I have no clue why I farmed for another one, but I did, and five runs later I got an explosive one, which was worse than the corrosive one. And honestly, I did not even use it, so five extra farms for no reason. As usual, I'd expected to farm Doc Mercy for quite a while. The fastball made that easy, but he just dropped a legendary instantly. I'll take it. The Infinity Pistol is extremely handy, especially with my limited pistol ammo. Also, I'd normally do the second part of this mission, but the E-Tech gun isn't technically legendary, so I decide against it. And of course, I got This Ain't My First Rodeo. I love this achievement, I always get it. And after that, I met the other greatest character in this game. I should have killed your fat ass when I had the chance! Sorry, what was that? You gotta <laughs> That was awesome. Oh, howdy! I didn't see you there. These clips sum up why I love the fastball and how I got the car parts. I also raided the caravan for fun. We got an intruder. Get a memo. I didn't have any grenades to fastball that ma with, but the Unkempt Herald is the Unkempt Herald. Not a difficult fight at all. 
The Bloodshot Stronghold wasn't too bad, yet again, Deflection pretty much carried us through this entire section. It did get dicey in some parts, like here, but that's mostly melee and explosive enemies that we had to deal with. I also gained a few levels from farming Bad Ma around 6 times, but I got no good drops, so I'll add that here. Here's a summary of how most tough enemies went with the Fastball. I only died a few times during this run, but this had to be the most annoying death. Like look at that, the fire went out but I still took the dot damage. Not having a shield really sucks, but that was just an annoying glitch. After that, Rowan gets abducted, I pay a toll, and the baddie loader gets fastballed. The warden fight wasn't too difficult, I was just trying to conserve my ammo up until this point. I used Phase Lock and the Unkempt Herald to whittle his shield down. And, like most other enemies, he gets fastballed. I didn't have a fire weapon for a train to catch, but I used the machines to cheese it either way. These are normally pretty dangerous, but not having a shield would guarantee my death if I stood under one. But in one tap, we did it. So loud. So angry. And then, the single luckiest moment of the entire run. A random marauder dropped me a shield. The one thing I needed in this run, just a random enemy drops. That was awesome. Getting the Badonkanox weren't too difficult, but the buzzards were a little annoying. But Phaselock does an unreasonable amount of damage to them, and Mordecai Slag is a huge help. And one of the best lines in the game. <laughs> if you can't guess how Wilhelm went, I believe he's technically armored, so a few fastballs. Yeah, fastball him. I honestly expected this to be a little bit more difficult, so I decided to do some farming. After a total of 9 extra farms, I got Logan's gun. I also got a rolling thunder grenade at some point, but I don't have the clip of that and I don't know where it went, so 9 attempts and 2 more legendaries. Neither of which I used. I decided to speed up and speed run rising action. And all of Scooter's lines are amazing. While in the fridge, I also decided to do Fink's Slaughterhouse. I only got up to round 3 in here, and I was mostly doing it for the experience either way. I would have gone further if ammo and damage wasn't a huge issue. Maya's phase lock is also amazing at preventing this exploder from blowing up the bridge, so that's nice. The constructor was no big deal since it's a normal one, but it would have been way faster to kill if I had any grenades. The Thresher was also pretty easy. I cheesed a bit of his health off early on before he could get a shield, and I thought it would be pretty easy after that. But then he does this pretty funny thing where he just regenerates shield for a long time and negates most of my damage. But after that, it's an easy kill. No real trouble here. Defending the beacon wasn't difficult, but this happened during the fight. I've never seen this many exploders before. Why are there so many? But yeah, so besides that, the fight wasn't difficult, and I didn't lose the beacon. Normally, this part in the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve is really annoying, but the Unkempt Herald comes in handy yet again, making crippling the loaders extremely easy. Which is nice, because I absolutely hate this part. The rest of the mobbing was also extremely easy. Now I will do the natural selection annex later, but grabbing this checkpoint is essential for the legendary farm here. Because if you save and quit, you start at this point in the map instead. And at this point you can probably guess what carries me through the mobbing. Unkempt Herald, and of course, our best friend, the Fastball. 
This is one of my favorite places, mostly because it's the best legendary farm in the game. So I'll be farming these loot homies until I get some good legendaries. But on the first try, we get an awesome gun. Oh, I am happy to see you. After five additional farms, I'm going to make up the class mod to you guys. I got a legendary siren class mod, the exact one I wanted. The chances of this have to be very low. I also got a Hellfire, which is insanely useful, but the class mod is what kind of stunned me. After farming those loot homies, I decided to do the natural selection annex, and I got a legendary from round two. I didn't get any others from this, but still, this was an awesome find, considering it's a huge upgrade to my current grenade, and I love the quasar. Round 5 got a little bit dicey near the end, but I managed to get a Quasar after this second win and took out the bad Fire Thresher. Everything else was going fine. I was planning to go eat lunch after completing this level, but the game had other plans. Oh come on! But hey, at least I got to eat lunch a little bit sooner. But on the bright side, I did get another Legendary even after picking up the item from the boxes. While going through the rest of the level, I opened up a locker that spawned another loot homie, and this one just happened to drop another legendary. This is also amazing. The Curb Blaster actually carried me through quite a bit of this game. I honestly wish I could say more about the Bloodwing fight, but uh, yeah, she kind of just got melted by the conference call. I'm also over leveled, so that helps a bit, but yeah, there was no challenge to this at all. She was basically spawn camped. Here's a prime example of how all of the mobbing went after the preserve. Maya plus Convergence plus Quasar plus Curve Blaster. A devastating combo. So what you want? Great job. If it wasn't obvious, mobbing here wasn't difficult. The beacons were tough as usual, but the batty loader was also extremely simple. But guess what happened? I had an embarrassing death to my own baby maker. Opportunity is the same as usual. I also got some side quests, both for XP, some fun, but then I came to a sudden realization. Oh wait, he can drop the shield! Before farming Jasper, I decided to do the rest of the quests in Opportunity. Killing Jax by a double wasn't too difficult. You can't phase lock him, annoyingly, but you know, Baby Maker is extremely overpowered. I got the pocket watch, and now Maya sounds like Jack. And after six attempts, I now have a new awesome shield. And now that we have everything, it's time to go to Angel Core. The first constructor, of course, was no big deal. The baby turrets, considering this is a completely normal run, was no big deal. The batty constructor at the top threw me for a little bit of a loop, considering it was the same level as me. I tried to get its own nukes to kill it, but that failed. Considering the auto turrets are stationary targets, the baby maker more importantly, the Curb Blaster made easy work of them. The only thing that is weird about the Bunker fight is the fact that I have not fought Bunker legitimately in a while. My last playthrough was Zero, and uh, Boar exists, so I'm used to just boring Bunker to death. But uh, yeah, it felt weird to fight Bunker legitimately with Maya. But I use Conference Call for medium range. I use the Baby Maker for close range. But overall, there wasn't too great of a challenge. But I didn't get any legendaries on this try, and that's unfortunate. It means we'll have to come back and farm him later. Let's see here, I already talked about the amazing mobbing combo. What's so special about Angel Core? Oh right, so I beat Angel Core. Yeah, I beat Angel Core. But the game does this funny thing where it decides to, you know, crash before it's saved. 
Oh, come on. So guess what that means? I have to do it all over again. I did Angel Core twice and got none of the benefits. Marcus's loot room had nothing good, as usual. After entering the Iridium Blight, you normally have to go to Sawtooth Cauldron. However, I decided to go farm Bunker for a while. I hate it when legendaries fall through the floor, but on my first additional farm, I got an 85% sham. That's pretty amazing, and it will help me through quite a bit of the rest of the game. The only issue is, I think I've used up most of my luck for this run, because after 9 more bunker farms, I got no legendaries. I decided to try and farm King Mong for something, and it took me 14 farms to get a single legendary. Yeah, my luck has run out at this point. I used it all up getting that first shield. Since I'm grossly overleveled from all of that Bunker and King Mong farming, I have a very easy time with Sawtooth Cauldron, which is nice because this place is usually hell for any run. And the Borderlands 2 Classic, the game crashed. Thankfully though, this wasn't a horrible spot and I could get back here relatively quick. I speed ran destroying Boombringer. Mortar dropped me literally nothing. And the buzzards at the top, well, like I said in Tundra Express, Phase Lock is very good against buzzards. And, you know, we have the conference call. I also learned that you can trigger this just by driving your car close to the pipe. You don't even have to get out, which is pretty awesome. However, it was at this point in the game where I started to notice that my gear's lacking a bit. I mean, most of it is level 17 to be fair, so I'm not doing great damage, and this would soon prove to be a major issue. I managed to push through all the pumping stations, albeit very slowly. Man, this is way better than messing up the car jump a hundred times. The Badlands wasn't too difficult, and I decided to, of course, go to kill Saturn. I will admit though, I may have died here. Which is a little embarrassing considering I should have definitely killed him. But I came back and got my revenge and decided to farm Saturn for a little bit. After 7 runs and no legendaries, even when I was farming Bonehead for some extra XP, I was starting to be concerned. I decided to finish the rest of the story mission here, but I had an issue. I was starting to run out of good legendary farms. Sure, there are a few quests that I could do to get some legendary farms, but that would take a while. After starting the Talent of God and doing some testing before I really went on with the mission, I figured out that the Cataclysm tree is broken. It's way better than the Motion tree, mostly because the bottom skill of Motion is garbage at least in my opinion, and the bottom skill of Cataclysm is absolutely broken, and that's what carries us through the rest of this run. And Cloud Kill. Cloud Kill is broken. So yeah, I'll be honest, a good portion of the rest of the game is literally carried by Cloud Kill. I literally take out the Baby Maker, fire one shot, and I kill two bots. Yeah, this might be my new favorite skill in this entire game. Cloud Kill also makes easy work of my least favorite enemy. You can go ahead and harass me in the comments about this run is now invalid because I've been using a skill to carry me the entire time, but I think my was probably the most balanced choice for this run. Also, the Cloud Kill is technically a legendary, so cope. I also like it because it's another skill that can kill these stupid auto cannons. Generally, I don't really have a major issue with this bad constructor, and I actually like killing it instead of running away, but this time it provided a little bit of a challenge. I even got knocked into a fight for my life. But I did get a clutch second win from one of the turrets on it, so I won.
At first, I thought Jack might be a little bit of a difficult fight, but honestly, between the broken phase lock slag, cloud kill, and Jack deciding to stand still to do his little animation, he got melted. Like, I think that's the fastest I've ever killed Jack. The warrior, well, the warrior also kind of got melted, just a little bit slower than Jack. Especially when he dives under lava and you can't hit him. But I think the main reason I did so much damage to him is because he can actually get slagged, as you can see by the slag licked challenge I got there. So I slag him with my phase lock, cloud kill just does an insane amount of damage considering he stays still, and then, you know, conference call and curb blaster are great for huge targets, you know, like the warrior. So yeah, there was no real challenge to this fight. It's a little unfortunate, but it made for a satisfying ending to a crazy run like this. And to sum up most of my luck in this run, I got a legendary from killing him the first time, but it's going to take me a while to get another one. So yeah, plus one legendary. That's a pretty good shield too. It's very effective at farming Rack here, which is another good source of XP. But with the Warrior and Jack dead, how hard is it to beat Borderlands 2 with only legendaries? Well, it took us 93 total farm attempts and we got 17 legendaries in total. This was an insanely fun run, and honestly, I think I like doing challenge runs. If you guys want to see more runs like this, definitely let me know by leaving a like or comments. That helps a lot and maybe even consider subscribing if you will. This is honestly the most work I've ever put into a video, so I truly hope all of you enjoyed it. I put a lot more effort than I normally do into editing this. I added special counters and everything. Considering I got 500 subscribers when I was editing this video, I think it's a very fitting video for 500. But we're not quite done. You see, my goal is to get three legendaries from the warrior, and I got a shield, so it's time to farm for two more. No rest for the wicked. Also, here's the total playthrough time after I did the next farming section. One last thing for anyone who's curious. This is before I farmed for two more legendaries. This is my final build of the run. I still can't believe I beat Warrior with level 17 gear, but yet again, that class mod, getting that insanely rare drop is one of the best things that's happened to me in this entire run. After two more attempts, I got myself a flacker. It isn't the best legendary, but it's actually very effective against Warrior, which is convenient for farming him. After five more attempts, I got a volcano. This could be useful later on. So apparently I didn't count the shield when I meant three more legendaries, but after 17 more attempts when I was about to give up, I got a leech. In total, 117 attempts and 20 legendaries. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate all the support. This video has taken me five days in total through all the editing phases, so I hope it was really well done. Like I said earlier, if you like it, let me know with likes or comments. And to quote a lot of other people, stay awesome. This is going to be Enzo from Look Into Gaming, signing out.